this is minus one and so this is a half plus a half it's equal to one bit makes sense if I flip a co fair coin I get one bit of entropy now if indeed I changed it to one with P zero two then H is minus Q log Q and that curve looks like this zero one here's P here's one and the entropy looks like that when P is a half you have the entropy of one bit one bit of randomness when P is 0.11 you get half a bit of randomness. It takes roughly two coin flips of a coin with probability of heads 0.11 to give you as much randomness as one fair coin flip. And indeed, we'll play around. You can map these biased coin flips into perfect unbiased coin flips if you take say 2n of the biased coin flips they'll map into n of the unbiased coin flips and back and forth in other words you can get a probability uh, equality there Let me uh, interrupt to interrupt myself. Suppose you have a fair coin, a shiny quarter, half half. And I want to generate, I want you to generate a random variable that takes on the value of heads with probability 0.7170685. flips will it take you? Well, look, there's an infinite number of digits there. It may take you an infinite number of flips to generate this random variable. That's too pessimistic. You can do it in a finite number of flips. In fact, you can do it in a random number of flips, an expected number of flips of two. Two flips of this fair quarter can generate for you this random variable. So you have x equals one, a half, zero, a half. You have y equals one with probability P equals, and now I'm going to write it in binary. Point one one oh one oh one 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 oh etc. And so I'll put a two here. Point two and zero with probability Q. Uh, yes. Uh, you you don't need the plot to how you do this. I'm going to show how to do it right now.
Ja. Now, what I'm going to do is lay off the interval 0, 1 here and I'll put P right here. And I notice that if I start flipping X, if I keep flipping these fair coins, do you know what the distribution of this real number will be? I think a lot of you know what it is. Do you know what? Uniform zero. Uniform, exactly. Uniform. This is uniform zero one. So therefore, this number will fall in here with probability p, and fall in here with probability one minus p. And so, as soon as we know where this number falls in this part or in this part, we've generated y. Any questions? All right. Now, how long does it take us to know? Well, look at our first coin flip. If it comes out to be zero, and P is point 0.1, we're already below P. We're already in this half. We're done. We can be done in one coin flip. But if it's a one, we have to flip again. Again, half the time we will agree with it and still and have to continue, but half the time we will disagree with it and we'll then know uh, whether we're in this segment or in that segment. So indeed, our probability of terminating is that the first time this sequence of ones and zeros differs from the P sequence of ones and zeros. As soon as it differs, we know whether we're above P or below P. But the probability that it differs each time is, in, is exactly one half. And these events are independent. So indeed, <coughs> the expected number, and I won't define this here, the expected number of coin flips required to determine what y is, is the waiting time for the first tail in a sequence of, co of fair coin flips. And that turns out to be 2. So indeed, with two coin flips, you can turn this pure randomness into this arbitrary randomness, binary randomness there. The general theorem will be n bits of pure randomness will translate into nh plus plus or minus two uh, bits of the desired randomness that you're trying to create. Okay, let's see. Here's one final example of entropy. Now x is equal to t with probability a half, th with probability a fourth, and uh, tt with probability a fourth. You will have noticed by now that entropy has nothing to do with the values the random variable takes on, but just with the probability masses. 
right. So here are the entropy. Times log of minus log of a half, which is one, plus one fourth, plus uh, times log four, which is two, plus one fourth times log four, which is two. You'll also notice that the expected length of this sequence is three halves. That's not a coincidence. All right, let's go over here. Now we'll have a whole bunch of theorems. We know that the entropy of the random variable x is equal to the expected value of log 1 over p of x. X is a random variable, P of X is the probability mass associated with it, and the expectation is under the distribution P. It's like talking about the probability of a probability, except that here we're talking about the expected value of the log of the probability under the probability distribution. Right. So let's have some facts. Fact one. H is greater than or equal to zero. And the proof is zero is less than P less than or equal to one. So all of these terms are non-negative. And uh, so the expected value is non-negative. Here's fact two. The entropy to the base B of X, the random arrow, is log to the base B of A times the entropy to the base A. That. So that's how you change the base from E to 2 or anything else. You have factors like log to the base E of 2. And this follows just simply from the following fact. We want to show that log to the base B of x is equal to log to the base b of a times log to the base a of x. Once we prove this, then we apply this to each of the terms, the expected value goes through and we get the desired result. So, and of course, this is elementary, but you may have forgotten it. The proof is uh, simple. You write x is equal to a to the log to the base a of x. This is an identity. a to the log to the base a of x is x. Similarly, if I'd written in as b to the log to the base b of x, that's an identity, and then take log to the base b of both 